food. Who doesn't love it? It's part of our daily lives and it's one of my favorite parts of any vacation. There's hardly a better way to get to know the city you're visiting than through their cuisine. In this special episode of Family Travel, we're going to take a look back at some of our best and most delicious foodie favorite moments. We're going to share with you the most mouth-watering and Instagram-worthy foods we've tried on the show. We'll show you where to find the best chimichanga in the Southwest, head to the Texas State Fair where everything is deep fried and delicious, explore some unique cuisine we never thought we'd try, and for the cherry on top, take a stab at eating the biggest sundae I've ever seen. Plus, I'll even tell you about the strangest thing I ever ate. And let me tell you, it's not pretty. But don't worry, most of these dishes will have your stomach growling. Join us on this delectable, one-of-a-kind tour of our favorite food spots around the world. So sit back, grab a snack, and get ready to get hungry. Mmm, that is good. My name is Colleen Kelly, and when I was single, I lived abroad and traveled the world. Then I became a parent and wondered, how would I ever travel again? So I set out to find a new way to travel and get back to exploring the world family style. I'm here to guide you on how to get the most out of your family vacation. Pack your bags and join me, Colleen Kelly. We're going on vacation. Funding provided by... This show is sponsored by State Farm. When the unexpected happens, State Farm is here to help life go right. Breakfast, the most important meal of the day. One of my favorite breakfasts was at the White Stallion Ranch in Tucson, Arizona. Scrambled eggs, potatoes, and pancakes straight off the griddle. This homestyle breakfast only tastes that much better on the ranch. Here at the White Stallion Ranch, to get breakfast, you have to hop on a horse and ride on a 30-minute trail. But this is what you get. This is amazing. Oh, I got to go. Breakfast. If you're looking for a more urban breakfast, look no further than Cafe Strudel in Columbia, South Carolina. I've been told that this is one of the hottest cafes in town, so we just had to check it out. The line starts forming 30 minutes before it even opens. Oh, look, we're up. Ready? Everything on the menu sounds delicious, but we had to make sure to order the signature dishes. Cinnamon pancakes, French toast, and their famous hangover hash browns. I'm gonna try this, this is famous. It's supposed to be so good. Hangover hash browns. Look at that. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is so good. You have to try this, girls. Want to try a little bit? Mm -hmm. oh, you know what's great about this? Trying something new when you go to a new place. It's always good to try new foods. You got a big scoop. It's a hit. We know how picky kids can be but this dish has all the right ingredients that even they can't pass up. No wonder people wait in line. But sometimes people prefer to start their day off with something a little sweeter. Donuts, anyone? Courthouse Donuts in Sevierville, Tennessee is a perfect spot to satisfy your morning sweet tooth. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, great. Awesome, who's in the mood for donuts today? Who's not in the mood for donuts? Oh, we've got some good <laughs> ones. Have you had the donuts before? Do you know how it works? No? Well, we start with a vanilla cake donut. So all the donuts themselves are actually the same. Then you choose an icing, choose a topping, and choose a sauce. So you decorate it however you want it decorated. And here's the cool thing. There are about 19 on this side that are the most popular. On this side, tells you all the toppings, the icings, and the sauces, and you just go line by line and tell us which one. I think we're gonna have to get 13 and a half donuts. Yeah, you know what that represents? You know what? 12 jurors, one judge, and I have a chance you're going to be found guilty of eating a whole lot of donuts. With the help of the oh, owner's 12-year-old yeah. son, the girls were ready to whip up a courthouse dozen. But little did I know they had some unusual flavor combinations in mind. So I'm going to make a vanilla and fruity pebble one for me. And I'm going to make a chocolate with chocolate chip. And 
we're gonna make a very gross one. Bite. Okay. And if you don't like it, you have some water and some coffee. Or wash it down. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, mm. what is that? Peanut butter and chocolate. Yes. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, you girls know me so well. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good. Mm, I like this one. This is definitely a contender. Ready for the one? Yes, I'm judging the second one. Mm, I bet this one's gonna be even better than the next than the last one. Okay. Can I take a big bite or a little bite? Big one? Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, oh, it's very good. This is right. Mmm. Coconut? This is my personal I'm so favorite. proud of you. I bet this one's gonna be the best one. Just a few Where is it? Oh! <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's spicy. Oh, it's water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh Guess what it is? Oh, I tasted pickles on it, don't I? Yeah. Okay. What's the verdict? In our taste test, the pickles donut wins. Case closed. And if you're in Sevierville and looking for another kind of sweet treat, be sure to check out the Apple Barn and Cider Mill. It was there that we learned how to make one of my personal favorites, peanut brittle. So this is Gary, and Gary's gonna break off a piece for us to try. This is so fresh. You know, it smells so incredible. But kind of like caramel. Mmm, that is good. That is really good. And it's warm too, isn't that nice? Still craving something sweet? We've got plenty more where that came from. You'll just have to hold out till later for dessert. Yeah. If you're not too full from breakfast, it's time to head to the place where everything, including food, is bigger, much bigger. We explored the Texas State Fair while in Dallas in season four. We could not forget all their delicious deep fried delicacies. The State Fair is a 130 year old tradition that always starts on the last Friday in September and runs for three weeks and four weekends. That's a total of 24 days of family fun. And when we say it's big, it takes up about 277 acres of land. It's a long-standing tradition. There's families that have been here for many years, like the Fletchers who brought the corny dog to the State Fair of Texas back in 1942. You have the funnel cakes that were brought back in the 60s to the State Fair of Texas by the Airpillow family. There's so much tradition here. So we're always trying to find that balance of how to honor that tradition, but then also keep things innovative that make people want to come back to the fair year after year. It's all about the front. Food, the fried jello, and the, the, the corn dogs. I've heard great things about the corn dogs. The Fletcher dogs are one of the many reasons people enjoy coming back to the fair. We had to find out why some visitors wait over an hour in line. Hi, Hi how, how are, are you? you? I'm great, how are you? We're with like three of your famous corn dogs. The famous corny dogs, yes. you came all the way to Texas for our famous we corny did. dogs. We did, yeah, and I wanna know why they're so famous. Why are they so famous? Because they started with the State Fair in 1942 and the Fletcher's family, you're welcome, created these corn dogs because they realized that people were hungry and walking around the fair and was like, how could we feed them easily, have something to grab and go? So how many do you sell a year here? Our state fair runs about three weeks, um, and in that time we sell about 600,000. 600,000? I know, crazy. That's a lot. It, it must be good. They're <laughs> delicious. I can't wait. Do you guys like ketchup or mustard? What is our tradition here? Seems like the Texans love the mustard. Okay. But I love the ketchup. I like the sweet with it. Fletcher corn dogs were a hit, but there's so much more to taste. Fried pecan pie, fried cheesecake, Fried lemonade, fried chicken. Fried everything. Fried everything. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how they how they can fry Jello. Wouldn't it melt? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's only one way to figure it out. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Good. We'd like some fried Jello, please. My pleasure. There you go. I've got three balls in there. I've got three forks, and you may want to just take it and get a bite of it. That's the fun way to do. It. How do you make this without the Jello? Like. Yeah. Well, it took a little bit of research. Once we decided we were going to try it, my brother did some research and he figured out there's an ingredient we could add to the jello that make it stay gelatin. Oh my gosh. 
I like the way it's kind of like cool in the middle, but then warm on the outside. That's, that's a good combination. That's a that's a tough thing to pull off, but when it comes off, it, it, it's great. Is this one of the few places you can get fried jello? Well, we've heard there are other fairs that do it. We're the first ones to do it in the, the Texas State Fair. I think we may have to order a couple more. What do you think, girls? Thank you so much. Oh, it's our Great. pleasure. Thanks for coming over. Among our many dining experiences, we also had quite a few opportunities to make or catch our own food. We learned how to make pierogies in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Water. No, no, this is just regular water. Two cups. And incorporate all the flour into water and the egg. Okay. Caught and cooked our own shrimp in Amelia Island, Florida. Twisted up a few Bavarian pretzels in Frankenmuth, Michigan. I even caught a monkfish and learned how to prepare it at Kitty Kelly's restaurant in Ireland. How big is he, Colin? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Is a lovely fish. Woohoo! I did it! Thank you so much for helping me. That was just. <laughs> Go on. Oh, God, look at those teeth. Really cool, though, is I was on the boat this morning. Yeah. I caught that fish, and it's. Okay. <laughs> This is great. So when do you, when do we try it? Oh, okay. Okay. Is it too hot? Mmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. That is so fresh. Yeah. More recently, the girls and I got to mix our own guacamole at El Charo Cafe in Tucson, Arizona. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make guacamole. We love guacamole. Yes, yes. We wanted to learn. Yes. And we great. want you Thank to make you. it. Now I like to use hot sauce and very important that you don't try and get those that are too thin skin because they don't have enough fat and the guacamole never tastes right. I have ingredients set up for you of the avocado. I've already cut it. I have onion, tomato, and jalapeno. A little bit of lime because that keeps it from getting dark. A little bit of salt and I'm going to help you add the lime Ooh. to your guacamole. When it comes to food, I think it's safe to say that sometimes making it is really half the fun. We all have certain foods we think we would never try. From snails to squid, there's no limit to what people will eat. And sometimes if you step out of your comfort zone, you might be pleasantly surprised. Thanks to the encouragement of viewers like you, I've stepped out of my comfort zone a lot on the show. In his face, so. Okay, that's okay. Very nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Even with food. One food I was pleasantly surprised about can be found in its country of origin, Scotland. Haggis, Scotland's traditional dish, is a pudding made from the heart, liver, and lungs of a sheep mixed with oatmeal and various spices. Traditionally, it is encased in the animal's stomach and cooked. I've always thought of myself as an adventurous eater, but this is my first time trying haggis. Okay, haggis surprised me. It really was delicious, but not all foods I've tried have been, which brings us to the weirdest food I've ever tried. In New Orleans, Louisiana, back in season one, I ate a bug on purpose. All right, should I do it? Okay. Okay, I am glad I could say I did it, but I don't think I'm going to ever do that again. I'll leave that snack for the birds, literally. <laughs> Girls night out! <laughs> and before we move on to dinner, let's stop for some appetizers in Chickasaw Country, Oklahoma. Although I love my kids, sometimes moms need a break too. This season, my girlfriends and I took a much needed mom's getaway. For our night on the town, we headed to Blake Shelton's Bar and Restaurant, Old Red, for some delicious appetizers. Okay, Blake Shelton was backstage. Did you see him? Like, really? Yeah, he was. I mean, it was a cutout out of him, uh -huh. but it totally counted for pictures. Yeah, sure. That's true. <laughs> All right, this is great. I am so happy we're here. Should we toast? I'm sad okay. this is my last night, because you guys are going to have so much fun. I know. Me. We're so sorry you're leaving. I'm going to do some family We're going to go home. We'll send you pictures. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, to Katie. Uh, no, to all of us. <laughs> to the girls. To the to girls. The girls. Yeah. Woo. We decided to start out with some delicious appetizers. 
grab half. including one of my personal favorites, fried green tomatoes. Mm. I'm sorry, but we're in Oklahoma and fried green tomatoes, you have to have one. After getting our fill of fried green tomatoes, we were ready to move on to the main course at the Columbia Restaurant in Tampa, Florida. The Columbia Restaurant is located in Ybor City, the historic Latin district of Tampa. It's the perfect place to go if you're craving some Cuban cuisine. Yes. Really good. I've never had a soup like that before. Have you? Mm -mm. You taste the oh yeah, my goodness the smoked. Look how good flavor. that looks. Mm. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. I'm gonna have to try that, Keelan. Can I try that? Yeah. Thank it's you. really good. What does it taste like? Like a sandwich. <laughs> a really good sandwich. <laughs> a really good sandwich. Wow. That is good. This Thank is a you. Cuban sandwich. They're known for this here. Here we go. <laughs> that is great. Good spot, Joe. You want to try it? Mm. It is really good. It's a cold soup. Have you ever had a cold soup before? No. Try it. Do you like it? It's I think it's different, but it's really good. All the food has been super good, but the paella is what they're really known for, and we are super excited to get that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be good. That looks okay. so good. Yeah. Wow. It's so colorful, too. Are you ready? What's this? Calamari. Try it! Oh my goodness, what is this? At the Columbia restaurant, it's easy to forget you're not in Cuba. We couldn't do a best food episode without highlighting one of my hometown favorites, deep dish pizza at Gino's East in Chicago. It's no secret the Chicagoans love their deep dish pizza. And back in season one, we got to make it ourselves. We grabbed two slices of cheese. This is easy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> If it's pepperoni, we're going to add seven pepperonis. And if it's sausage, we're going to take a little handful and we're going to pat it down just like we saw in the kitchen a little bit earlier. While you're waiting for your pizza, don't forget to bring markers. And whiteout is my personal favorite. I hope you save some room for dessert. We're taking a trip to the land of the Alps, watches and chocolate, Switzerland. For all you chocoholics out there, there's no better place to get genuine Swiss chocolate than, you guessed it, Switzerland, where we got to tour a real life chocolate factory. To see the chocolate world. Uh, yeah. You bet. Of course, right? You want to have chocolate? Milk chocolate was invented here. Oh, cool. <gasps> Look at oh, that. Wow. First, we touch, smell, and taste our way through the museum. Look at chalky. Yeah, it's chalky. And then you get, it's all liquefied, and then you'll let it cool, and you can make it in all different types of things. Woo, should we pull this down? Did she try that? Put your hand under it. Oh, oh, she got a lot. <laughs> through the next set of doors, we are delighted to find a make your own chocolate bar station. That's a big chocolate for yeah. little girl. You want to do that? It's a lot. <laughs> Raspberries, strawberries, oh, I pineapple. Think, I think they know what they want. Even the littlest chocolatiers can participate in this. All right, Eli, they have to put it on the conveyor belt, and it's going to take about five minutes to cool off. Five minutes? That's a long five minutes. <laughs> that it is for a <laughs> sure kid. Is. Well, let's go check it out. Ready? All right. Come on. Which one's Elena's? There you wow, go. Look at, oh, look at this side. It's so big. Oh, oh that's so pretty. Look at the other side. It's a beautiful city of Lucerne. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Did you turn it around, Elena? Look at it. Look at the other side. Oh, see the chapel yeah, bridge? Yeah, do like that side, right, Elena? This is Lucerne. Okay. You made it. Can't make it to the Alps to satisfy your chocolate craving? A chocolate tour in Frankenmuth, Michigan is another delicious yeah, option. Dark chocolate raspberry cream. All our chocolates are handmade right in the store by a woman named Mary. Everyone loves Mary. You know, she gives us a little piece of chocolate on the side there, so. <laughs> that looks good. And most of your dark chocolate's made with about 70% cocoa. Ours is made with 40. So it's going to really? be a little sweeter. Yep. It's really good for you, too, I hear. Should yep. we try it? Yeah, you totally can. OK. Tell me what you think. Mmm. Start enough. you guys off with some sparkling red grape juice for you guys. Mm. I don't usually like strawberries with chocolate. No? Yeah, but I love this. You this like is that really one? good. And actually, for you, you get 
called Traminette. Traminette's a hybrid of the Gewürztraminer grape. It's gonna smell like flowers for you and taste like apples and pears. Is that made here in Franklin? Nope. They're all made on the west side of the state near the, uh, the Holland area. Oh, so this is a Michigan wine though. Yep. Oh, that's great. All Michigan wines and then, so if you take a sip of the wine to acquire the taste, and then you're gonna bite into that piece of chocolate again. It's gonna confuse the taste buds a little bit and you should notice flavor change. So the system okay. we always work with is heaven. wine chocolate wine, yeah. Next, we're heading to the Great White North with a flag that boasts a symbol of none other than the maple leaf. It's no question that the best place to find anything maple is in Canada. Quebec City, here we come. Here in the middle of the woods, you can indulge your sweet tooth with delicious maple taffy before you and your family sit down to a traditional sugar shack meal. Sugar shacks are especially popular in spring when the sap begins to flow and maple producers start to make syrup. We start our visit with a quick lesson on how to make maple taffy. Come here. Okay. I will pour the delicious maple syrup in the snow. You wait five or ten seconds and the syrup will frozen. Is this a tradition here? Yeah, it's a really tradition. The children, they love the maple taffy. It's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is so good. It's sweet. This is so good. Yeah. Oh, I can eat two or three of these. You know what I loved about this place? We came here and it was like in the middle of nowhere. And all of a sudden, this huge shack is here and it's, you know, rustic and, and we get to make this. And in the wood. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, in the wood, the maple syrup. Very important, we use the maple sugar tree. Here we have 12,000 maple sugar tree, and we make approximately one liter or one liter and a half of maple syrup per tree. As cold as it was, the sweet taste of that maple taffy sure warmed us up. For chocolate dipped key lime pie on a stick, we headed to none other than Key West chocolate. Florida. Put it on a stick. Okay, Enjoy. Kermit Carpenter owns Kermit's Key West Key Lime Pie Shop on Elizabeth Street. Don't miss this stop. The dish, after all, is named for the limes that grow naturally throughout the Florida Keys. It's really good. Um, it kind of melts in your mouth. I, I can't really describe it. I just really, really like it. For our last, but most definitely not least dessert, the biggest ice cream sundae I've ever seen. Right here at Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor in Buena Park, California. Think you could finish this 28 scoop sundae? Then Farrell's is the place for you. Their famous zoo sundae is as legendary as it is delicious. My daughter and niece got to learn from the experts how to make it and deliver it. Hello ladies. Hi. Yeah, I used to come here as a little girl, so we're excited to be here. Do you remember Farrell's biggest Sunday that we had here? Yes, it was huge. It's called the zoo. Do you ladies want to know how to make it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go make it. Okay, so what do I do? I'll meet you at the table. Okay, deal. I'll get waited on. Nice, thank you. All right, the first thing we do is put sugar cones on top of the main three ice cream flavors. Press them in so they can stay there. You guys are gonna put on the fudge and strawberry sauce on top. Put on your own pace, just pour it all over. Next thing we do is we whipped cream this whole thing. It almost takes up a whole can of whipped cream. Oh, that's a lot of whipped cream. Yeah, that's a lot of whipped cream. Oh, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, now next you guys can put on bananas over here, and you could just stick them in on the round the rims just like that. And it's okay if they don't really stick up right. And these are little zoo animals that go on top. Has anyone ever finished it before? We used to have ice cream eating contests and the final contestants used to finish one whole zoo by themselves in a matter of minutes. Whoa. What do they call it in the zoo? I don't know, maybe it takes a whole zoo to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Are we ready to take it out? Bob Farrell says a traditional way to deliver the zoo to their tables. Do you guys want to learn how to do it? Oh yeah. That is okay. unbelievable. Did you make that? They it's did huge. I remember this when I was little. Oh my goodness there gracious. Go. <laughs> How are we gonna finish this? Are you gonna help me? Yeah. 
All right, sit down. Let's get some spoons out. Wow. Challenge accepted. Okay, so maybe our eyes got a little bigger than our stomachs, but what we were able to eat at the zoo was still delicious. To old memories and making new ones. To ferals. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. We took you from coast to coast and even across the sea to bring you the best cuisine from all five seasons of family travel. From chocolate in Switzerland to key lime pie in Key West, we've shown you some of the best of the best. You came hungry, and I hope you're leaving happy. Thanks for watching Family Travel. I'm Colleen Kelly. Enjoy making memories on your next family vacation. This show is sponsored by State Farm. When the unexpected happens, State Farm is here to help life go right. For more information on upcoming destinations and projects, visit FamilyTravelCK.com. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And check us out on Snapchat. We'd love to hear from you.